It's been an interesting experience being a fan of Black Clover. While the highs of the show are really high, the lows of the show are really low. If Inconsistency was an anime, it'd be Black Clover. At times it can look like one of the best shonens, and other times it just looks incomplete. Whether it's budget cuts or lack of staff from Puro causing them to outsource a lot of the content, the anime can look completely different week to week. One of the biggest arcs we've had in the show so far, the Elf Reincarnation arc, frankly, looked like shit. It does look like shit. In this day and age, it's just really difficult to produce a long form weekly anime and deliver consistent results. However, the last stuff we saw with the Devils is by far the best the show has looked, and I often find myself rewatching that fight with Asta and Yami quite frequently. Maybe something got figured out behind the scenes, you know, we're finally trending in the right direction, so I can't wait for some more episodes. Honey? You've got a big storm coming. Yeah, as soon as it was getting good, the show decides to go on break to make a movie. A flashback movie. I got my hat on backwards and it's time to fucking party. I completely forgot that the movie was coming out until I saw a bunch of people on the old Bluebird app praising it. This much hype created around a not really important movie? Yeah, that sounds like Black Clover. Studio Puro has been on an absolute heater though lately with the Thousand Year Blood War and Road of Naruto, so maybe they just unlocked an animation cheat code. When it comes to watching movies like these, I have a pretty strict rating criteria. Did it look good? And did I enjoy the things that they made look good? The story could be about a fucking tree, I literally would not care, it's not canon anyways. Or at least so I thought, but turns out this movie is actually related to the story. It takes place in the six month time skip before the devil stuff actually went on in the anime. But still, I was just really interested in the fights. But I guess if anyone cares about the story, here's the synopsis. Former Wizard King Bad. Former Wizard King Sealed. Seal Broken. Resurrects other wizard kings to create new world cause he's angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. I don't like you now. There you go, that's the story. Now for the actual important stuff. Safe to say I fully understand why people have been praising this film. It doesn't just look good, it looks fan-fucking-tastic. This is significantly better than anything we've seen in the actual anime, which is usually what happens in anime movies, but I didn't think it would look this much better. The characters, the environment, the magic, everything is so full of color and just honestly beautiful to look at. I ain't that motherfucker thug down. Get that shit beautiful than a motherfucker. I also love the addition of these super crisp black outlines. It really helps distinguish the characters from the background. One thing Black Clover has always excelled in is world and character design, and this movie allows us to see it in full effect. Then there's the real important stuff, the fight scenes, which is basically the whole entire movie. Yep, basically two hours of fights. Sign me up. I'm gonna punch you in your mouth, your throat, and your solar plex. Then I'm going to throw you on the ground and commence to stomp in your face into the cement. This movie felt exactly like the Thousand Year Blood War effect. Like we've seen what the anime has produced before, and you have the expectation that it's gonna look better, but there's no way you could predict that it would look this good. The overall theme of Black Clover is to surpass your limits, and safe to say, that's been done in literally every way. Firstly, fight choreography. Like, there's actually choreography. No more watching just a bunch of random fucking lines moving around the screen trying to figure out what the hell is even going on. Although Black Clover is a world of magic, we have a ton of extended sequences with hand-to-hand -hand combat and with weapons. The movements are crisp and the sound design lets us feel the impact of every attack. <laughs> But as I just mentioned, Black Clover is a world with magic, and don't worry, we get to see plenty of it in this movie. Every single ability we've seen in the anime so far has had a massive visual upgrade, and there's even new moves that we haven't seen before. The ones that stood out the most to me were Noelle's Sea Dragon's Roar and Yuno's Spirit Dive. Pretty much every time Sea Dragon's Roar is used, it looks completely different, but I'm a huge fan of how it looks in this movie. It's a much deeper blue with this added shimmer effect that makes the attack feel much more threatening. And instead of, you know, having this bright ass green overlay with the brightness filter on his character turned all the way up, the ability actually has some proper shading, with the aura appearing more intense around the edges. And of course, Asta's abilities look great, but I also want to give a big shout out to Mario Leona. 10 out of 10 would get punched. Why don't you punch me in the face? Punch me in the fucking face! This is the level of detail that I think Black Clover fans have been wanting and know that Studio Puro is capable of producing. Every fight, even the minor ones, are satisfying to watch, but the four main battles at the end are above and beyond. 
there was no business in them going this hard. Hey, yo! But if I had to choose, Asta's final fight is easily my favorite. It might even be in my top 10 anime fights of all time, which is fucking absurd when you think that this movie literally does not matter. It's one of the most visually appealing fights I have seen. Definitely had to have used at least every color in the Crayola 64 Cran box. I don't want to spoil the entire thing, but just look at this. Now, do I have my issues with this movie? Sure. For one, Asta was supposed to be in exile because of the Devil Trial, but then just shows up to this tournament with a mask on like no one was going to notice. That's basically the equivalent of escaping the cops while just wearing a fake mustache. How do you do, fellow kids? And of course, once his identity is revealed, no one really seems to care. Also, knowing that the story in this movie is canon makes me really wonder why we didn't get more backstory on the previous Wizard Kings. Even the main villain Conrad is like an enigma, all we got to see was what looked to be someone close to him die. If these characters aren't brought up at a later point in the anime, it just kind of feels like a wasted story. The other main issue is this chick. How's one of the previous Wizard Kings, known for being unbeatable in combat, gonna be named Princia Funny Bunny? I couldn't help but let out a slight chuckle when hearing her name, but again, 10 out of 10 would get punched. Can I crush your balls? Yeah. However, the biggest issue about this movie is me because I'm a hypocrite. I know I said a minute ago that this movie doesn't matter. I don't know how necessary it was to get a movie on the time skip, but I will say I think it's really important that it came out. It shows what Black Clover can and should look like when given proper time for production. It's also nice for fans who have seen all the highs and lows to get something that is just highs. Perhaps taking a break from the weekly long-form content is what Pierrot needed to give Black Clover the attention it deserves. I'm hoping the feedback of the public has been received and that when the anime comes back, it will instead be adapted seasonally, similar to how the Thousand Year Blood War is being done. Although Pyro has done a shit ton of long form, it just doesn't seem to be the way anymore, and One Piece is like the only real successful anime doing it. Yeah, it sucks to have less of the show to consume, but I think the general consensus of the public is in favor of quality over quantity. Shueisha has publicly said that they want to grow Black Clover into the next Naruto, but I think maybe sticking to 12 or 24 episode seasons would be what's best going forward. If you've had a chance to watch Sword of the Wizard King, let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Knowing that this does pertain to story, there's some obvious holes with the previous Wizard Kings and things like Asta getting his devil arm before the Dante fight, but just based on my overall enjoyment, it's like a 10. Spring season is wrapping up, which means there are a lot of shows to talk about, so I'm hoping you'll be around here for those videos. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. I want to give a huge shout out to the people that support me on Patreon, including Killer Bunny, Leon, Little PK, Peppy Jewel, Nicholas Gutierrez, Tech Rob, Shaky Pants, and Chupa. If you want to join the Patreon, the link is in the description. That's all for this time. Hope to see you here again.